One of the features of geometry is to identify the parts of these shapes. So <clears throat> the points that you see here on the tips have a name. And the plural is verti, vertices, and the singular is called a vertex. It's really a point where the lines meet. The lines themselves also have a name. And the name we use to describe these lines um, and edges is in fact edge. So these are called edges. Now, <clears throat> when the edges enclose a space, we have a name for that space in that area. One is here, another is in the front, one on top, one on the bottom, one on the other side. In fact, there are six. And what we call these are the faces of the shape. So we have the vertices, the edges, and the faces. A question that's often asked is something to the effect of how many vertices are on a cube? Well, you count. There are four on top, four on the bottom, therefore there are eight. How many edges? To figure this out, you could just count them up. There are one, two, three, four on the bottom, five, six, seven, eight on the top, and then four more, which makes 12 edges on this shape. And there are six faces. All the faces on a cube are squares. So essentially, if you took one face and you cloned it six times two three four five six you have the six faces of a cube and you can remember that there would be six faces by thinking about a number die a number die usually has all the faces one two three four five six uh, a right circular cylinder, <coughs> because of the curves, it's harder to really talk about vertices, as there are no straight lines uh, to encounter. But yet we can still talk about this idea of a face. If you look at the top and the bottom of a right circular cylinder, what we see are two circles. Those are two of the faces of this shape. The top and the bottom are both identical circles. The middle area might be a little bit harder to think about. Try to picture what <coughs> would it take and what would it look like for a shape that wraps around a circle and then keeps going up or down. Kind of like, I think the way I think about it is um, a hollow tube almost some kind of hollow, hollow metal pipe or hollow metal tube or even a toilet paper roll. If we took a scissor and cut along this toilet paper roll, just like cut somewhere straight down, and we open this thing up, in fact what you would get is a rectangle. What's interesting about this rectangle is it has to be long enough to wrap around these circles because it fits perfectly. So this rectangle has a length of the circumference of one of the circles on top and bottom. Remember, circumference is 2 pi r. Now, this side of the rectangle depends on the height. So in fact, when you're asked what are the three faces of a cylinder, you have two identical circles and a rectangle that's long enough to wrap around them. Sometimes you might get a picture like this. Two circles, <coughs> and then something like this. Well, you could tell this rectangle is too long, but sometimes when it's getting close, and you're not sure, look at the diameter of one of the circles. Remember that if this rectangle fits exactly around the circumference, then 
it will be three times longer than this diameter. Remember, that's what pi says. That circle is three times longer around than it is across. So this 2 and 3. This rectangle is far too long. A more accurate drawing, a rectangle that would actually work, would stop about here. This rectangle would fit around the circle because it is as long as the circumference. The circumference is just one, two, three times longer than the diameter. Remember that rule that circumference equals pi times the diameter, or three diameters. A right rectangular prism brings us back to the ideas of edges and faces and vertices. The only difference now is that the six faces, and this is different from the cube, um, the six faces are not equal. It may be that you have two small rectangles and then four rectangles that go around the surface in between. What you will find though on a right rectangular prism is that these four faces have to be identical. So face 6, 5, 4, and 3 have to be equal. You can tell from the picture, if one of these rectangles was shorter, there'd be a gap. And also, faces 1 and 2 on the ends also have to be equal. You can't have faces that are all different sizes for a right rectangular prism. A right triangular prism, very similar. <coughs> um, the only time you have equality in this time, in this shape with the faces, are the two triangles in the end. They need to be equal, otherwise it's not a right triangular prism. So faces one and two have to be equal. Now, in many of these shapes, the other three sides are unequal rectangles. They will all be the same height, but they might be different widths. I'm talking about this is the width. So this is face 3, this is face 4, and this is face 5. It could be anything, because these widths connect to the three sides of the triangle on the bottom and top. If they fit perfectly, they're the exact same length as those length sides of the triangle. But remember, triangles can have all different lengths. And also, it's important to notice that we only have five sides, and, excuse me, five faces on a right rectangular prism. Other shapes you might encounter are a cone. Think of uh, a party hat with the, excuse me, or an ice cream cone where the bottom part may or may not be covered. It depends. Usually, the bottom is covered. It's not like an ice cream cone where you can reach your hand in. Think of it as an ice cream cone with a cap on it. That's a cone. And the other shape we need to think about the faces of are square pyramids and other types of pyramids. A square pyramid is typically what we deal with, where at the bottom is a square. And then around the top are these one, two, three, four triangles. So in fact, this has five faces. The four triangles on the top, which should be identical, and the one square, oops, and the one square on the bottom. What should match up is this side of the square and the bottoms of the triangles. The cone is an interesting source of discussion. On the bottom we have a circle, that's one face. And on the top, <coughs> what we would have is this type of Pac-Man-ish circle thing that we can call a face. This part of the, the shape would wrap around the circle and these two parts come together. It's hard to talk about, so let's look at a picture. Here we have this cone and you can see that the surface on top, this is the shape I'm talking about. This red part right here will wrap around the shape and these two pieces will come together when you fold the shape. And if you look under the shape, they chose to make this one an open cone on the bottom. But a lot of the times, 
that will be closed for us. So you would include that bottom as a face. You can see diff there are all different types of cones, a little bit taller. You get a sense that this has this two faces, the one on the bottom, in this case which is empty, and this party hat on top. 